for the things that he is doing. Amen. He is worthy. Amen. He is worthy of all the praise and all the admiration that we can give him. It is a joy, amen, to be in the midst of you tonight to hear these things, amen, concerning our God. Amen. And to see what God is doing and to be in the move of the Lord. Look here, if it's ever been a time to hold on and to hold out, that time is now. Amen. Don't you let go. Amen. Praise God. Hold on until continual changes come. Amen. We thank God. As we look to him in prayer, Father, again, we praise you and we do thank you for the service thus far. Everything that's been saved. To give your name the glory, you are worthy of it all. Just to hear of your goodness, to hear how you're blessing others, to see how you're keeping us, and see how you're preserving us, and strengthening us, and giving us what you're giving, it is an inspiration all by itself. We want to say thank you tonight. Now, Lord, look upon us as we prepare to preach and teach your word. You said, faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by your word, I pray tonight that your word, you will send it forth to meet the need of every hero tonight. Those that are in the visible audience, as well as those that are in the invisible. That on tonight, God, they will be inspired, encouraged to continue to walk with thee. To hold on to you in every promise that you've given unto them. We realize your word is right. And you said upon this rock, you would build your church. And the gates of hell was not going to prevail. So on tonight, send your word to build us. Send your word to establish us. Send your word to strengthen the hearts of men and women everywhere. These things we pray and ask in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said amen. Amen. Put your hands together for him one more time. Amen. Before you see it. Hallelujah. Yes, we thank the Lord for what he is doing by his spirit. Amen. Praise God. It is wonderful and marvelous in our eyes. Amen. We do thank the Lord. Amen. For all of who he is and what the Lord has done. Praise God. We thank God for each one of you upon this rock. Amen. You this in here on tonight that God has joined and has made this such a family. Amen. And I mean, and more is to come. Amen. I mean, on the daily basis to get the calls and the different messages that that, that seems to come out of nowhere to see what the Lord is doing and about to put together. Hey, I believe the best is yet to come. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. He is preparing to do something great in the midst of the people like never before. You know everything he do is great and good. Amen. Praise God. But we're longing for the more of him, wanting to see the souls come on in. Amen. They need to be saved. They need to be delivered. They need to be restored. They need to be healed. Amen. Come on into our Father's house. Amen. And watch what the Lord does for you. We thank God for those in, by the way, of internet. Amen. YouTube and Facebook family. Amen. That has just been consistently, amen, just giving us words of encouragement. Amen. We salute you, the people of God. Amen. Who is a raw priesthood. Amen. A holy nation, a chosen generation. The apples of God, I, amen, you mean something to him. Amen. And it is a privilege and honor to stand before you. Thank God, amen. Praise God to be a servant unto those that love him and his appearing. You can be seated tonight in his presence, amen. Tonight, I thank God, amen, for my wife making an audience. And she had some dinner work today. Amen. And it seemed like he was there all day. Amen. So I thank God for her sins, for God sending her through that. And amen. Bring it up through it, rather. Amen. Praise God. I tell you, we take nothing for granted. Amen. Look, it's on record. Some have just went to for checkups and didn't make it home. Amen. Praise God. I know one that went for a physical. Amen. Doctor said go over to the hospital and have them run certain blood work and they didn't make it home. Amen. You got many that went to dental offices and went places and amen. They go to work and don't make it home. Amen. Praise God. So we thank the Lord. 
amen, never taking anything for granted. And I'm just one of those that believe is nothing that he do is small. I know sometimes when people do that, you're measuring that based on looking at others. But if you look at who God is, he never does anything small. He don't know how to do small. He's a mighty God. And he's a big God. So everything he does, amen, is big. You know, when he when he encourages you, when he when he gives you his thoughts, when he when he gives you his confidence, that's big. Oh, yes, it is. Amen. Because I can remember, amen, at one point in time that I wouldn't get none of that when I was in my sins and trespasses. Amen. Look at here. I always tell people, amen. I, I, I understand David when David said, Lord, withdraw not thy Holy Spirit from me. And any believer that has come to know God, look at what you do know. You know how it feels to be without God. Amen. Amen. You know how it feels to not have no peace. I, I know some have been on Hallelujah Roll a long time and it seems like they forgot. Amen. But oh, don't you get it twisted now. Amen. We ain't always been saved and ain't always known the Lord. Amen. And you didn't know. You didn't know. I didn't know. But the Lord was good anyhow. Amen. And when you come to know him where he can walk with you on a day-to-day -day basis, he can talk with you. I want you to know, amen, you got to get it right now here that when you get in heaven and places, you just keep walking. Amen. And I always tell people now, you can't, you can't get that praise of the Lord and rejoicing down. You're good. I don't know if that's where you want to go. Amen. Because that's all that's going to be of that. Amen. So we need to learn how to stay thankful and grateful. Amen. Because trust me when I tell you, the 24 elders and all the heavenly hosts that kept their verses state, hey, they give it to them in eternity. Amen. Praise God. And I tell you something, ever since I got saved, I've sought the purpose in my heart. Amen. I'm going to bless you in spite of no matter what. Amen. No matter how I get treated, no matter what's being said, at the end of the day, they wasn't there. You was there when I called on your name and when I needed you. Amen. Praise God. So it is a personal thing, and that's what we preach over here, is getting to know the Lord for yourself. Amen. That you understand he walks with you day to day. He talks with you on the day to day. He preserves you. He keeps you. You know, you didn't save yourself. He saved you. Amen. And you don't keep yourself. He keeps you. And many of us have been over here and he has healed us. We didn't heal ourselves. He healed us. Amen. Praise the Lord. As they were testifying and I saw Mother Ethel jump up. And I was telling some people, amen, while we were there. And uh, we went on one road trip and she got news, amen, from men that wasn't good, amen. And they spoke cancer. They seen cancer. Amen. And I mean, I've never seen such where someone, she came and she spoke to me. Amen. And I, while she was talking, the Lord let me sense a calmness about her. And she began to say what the doctor said. God bless you, Michael. Amen. Begin to speak what the, what the doctor said. And I said, you know what? Then what we're going to do is pray. And we're going to pray right now. Amen. And I mean, by praying, I felt the electricity and the heat of God. While we were sitting right there and after we got through, you know what nobody doing, no spinning top, amen, and none of that. I mean, the power hit, and we went on and had church in Chicago, and weeks go by. And so here we go again, Mother Anderson, we on our way, because Mother Ethel had not been able to make the service due to some other things. And we riding, and she tapped me while she's on the back. She said, and, and, and Pastor, by the way, because I, I haven't been able to um, get to the services, but I got to tell Testimony. Amen. And I knew right here, so I looked in that mirror. Amen. And she began to make me to know that the doctors called her in there after looking again, and they didn't see cancer no more. Come on here now. Amen. That's why we rejoice and we glad. Because our God is a mighty good God. Hallelujah, Jesus. He's still doing what he's done in days gone and past. He's still the God that we read about. Amen. What man think is impossible with God, it is possible. And I want you to know whether you're in here or by the means of internet, if God can do it for one. You need to rejoice and understand you next in line, honey. You next in line, brother. Come on here. Amen. God is more than able. 
because he paid the price to do it. Thank God and we giving him all the glory. I said he healed up. Amen. And that's why we magnify him. And we preach a great big God and a defeated devil. That mankind would realize it ain't got to end like that. Amen. Because there's a God that loved you and he proved it a long time ago. Amen. Yes, he done it for you when you wasn't in your best state either. Amen. He paid the price. Amen. While we were yet sinners. Uh-huh. Come on here. Amen. We wasn't doing right. Didn't know nothing about sanctification and holiness. While we were bound and knee deep in the miry clay. Amen. He said, I love man so. I delight to do the will. And the will is to go down and to pay the price and become the ransom. Ah, I, I want I'm going to go and suffer stripes for him. Amen. That he can be healed from all type of infirmities and diseases. Amen. I'm going to do it for mankind. And that's why we are excited, amen, to be, amen, chosen to preach and to bring good news. Yeah. In such a time where it seemed to be, I mean, look at here, it, it, it seemed like bad news reigns. Amen. But when you got good news and others that know of the good news begin to magnify good news, I found out the good news, which is the gospel of Jesus Christ, prevails. Amen. It will prevail over any and everything that the enemy is behind. Amen. I'm a believer that God wants to see man saved. He want to see sons and daughters saved. He want to see the old and the young go forth together. Amen. It's not his will that no man perish. Amen. He died for all mankind. I don't preach a black gospel or white gospel. None of that. Amen. Because it ain't that type of gospel. Amen. It's, a, it's an ethnicity gospel. I heard the scriptures say, preach the gospel to every creature. Amen. It makes no difference where they are in the world. Amen. The gospel is for mankind. It makes no difference how many mistakes you made, there's a way out. Amen. It makes no difference how bound you are, God can deliver you. It makes no difference how backward you are. I know how the church world is. Amen. They, they, they rank these sins. You know, oh, that's way up there. No, 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 no. I don't believe in ranking sin because it'll all take you to hell. Amen. Look at here. I preach that there's a way out for the homosexual. There's a way out for the lesbian. There's a way out for the drug addict. There's a way out for the alcoholic. You can be a gangbanger and God will look beyond your fault and meet your soul need. Amen. When you have not known love, when mom hadn't shown it, father never gave it. God is love. How can they hear if the preacher don't preach it? How can men know they can become new creatures if preachers don't believe it? Because I found out you can't preach what you really don't believe. You can talk at it, amen, talk up against the wall, but you can tell when somebody, amen, I've really come to know it, amen. You can't preach what you don't see. But when he opened your eyes and let you see, yes, I was blind, but now I see. Amen. When he let a man see, you can speak on that thing. Amen. And I'm letting men and women know, yeah, you might can't do it, but the Christ getting you, yes, you can. You can do all things through Christ that gives you strength. Can I be changed? Can I be changed? You can't change yourself, but he can change you. Can I do it? Can I live right? Yes, you can. God can give you the ability. You can. He can give you new days, new beginnings. Yes, he can. Make you all over again. Is that all right? Amen. Tonight, amen. We're not going to be long. I'm not going to be lengthy at all, but I want a word of encouragement. Amen. On tonight, we want to find ourselves uh, delivering this message to the hearer tonight. Amen. And, and it's something familiar, but on tonight, I pray this thing ring down in your soul. Amen. With, with the clarity and understanding. Amen. Of that, that we might see plainly and clearly. Amen. How it's done and who's on your side if he's on your side. And if he's not on your side, you got to know he's for you so you can get on the Lord's side. Amen. So he can be on your, on your side. And that you might understand life is really in him. It really is, amen. It's really in the Lord. So everything we speak and say on tonight shall be centered around the just shall live by faith. Woo. 
Hallelujah. Look at somebody and repeat these words. The just, the just. shall live by faith. And any time you see shell in the Bible, you can take that to the bank. Amen. Because when you see shell in the Bible, that's God saying, look, I said it. I, I'm able to do it. I will perform it. I will bring it to pass. Amen. And what he said unto us all and every hearer tonight, even by the way of internet, amen, is the just shall live by faith. Now, I know so many things can be spoken concerning you. Hey, you're just like your uncle, your brother, your daddy, your mama. Amen. You just ain't no good. Ain't nothing good about you. I come to counsel all that. Amen. And let you know if you are son or daughter of God, look, you're going to make it. Amen. At the end of the day, you just got to hang on in there. Amen. And let God work some things out. Let God turn some things around. Let God move in your behalf and yes. in the meantime take your eyes and your ears off earthly matters and uh -huh. zoom in on G.O.D. God yes. because this is on tonight this is true the just shall live by faith and if you're not saved this message does not exclude you because those of us that have been justified once was amen and we are witnesses not to put mankind down because too long the church amen have just judged man and just picked on people and talked at people let somebody mess up and do that. Uh, look, no, 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 no. If you got God, you say, God, you got to help them. Amen. Because I know it's not your will that they perish. I want you to know even what's happening in the land, God loves mankind. Amen. He loves the sinner man. I know a lot of preachers don't like preaching it like that. But I got to let the sinner man know God loves you. And we got some preachers that really believe that God don't hear sinners. Amen. Because they don't know how to write the divine the word of God. But I will come to let you know if you saved tonight, how did you get in here, good buddy? Amen. You was a sinner one day. You cried out. David said, this poor man, he cried and he heard my cry. Amen. You got to put these scriptures together and come to understand. Even when they were spoken over there, amen, in the gospel, and they were dealing with that man, and they was talking about Jesus and trying to cast his version, and it was the man, not the disciples, not the disciples, amen, not believers. He said, look here, y'all so religious now, it, it, it's a known thing now. Y'all say God don't hear sinners, right? Y'all trying to say this Jesus the Christ is a sinner. Well, I was blind but now I see but now I, I don't believe God is using people to do this he was standing up being a witness he wasn't sitting there giving us a message to preach telling folks God don't hear you if you, if you a sinner that's a lie from the pit amen if you got a microphone and got a title if you've been called to be a saint he heard your cry one day somebody say amen and if you don't believe it I believe it he heard my cry one day I'd rather glory in my infirmities that God might get the glory. Amen. I ain't always been saved. Amen. By this grace, he saved me. Amen. I asked God to help me. Before I came to the church, I was tired of the things I was doing. I was tired of pumping my head. Tired of doing the same old thing. You get tired of doing drugs. You get tired of alcohol. You get tired of clubs. You, you get tired of going the same way and doing the same thing. And I love it because God hears the cry. I know, I know, I know so many thought it started happening when they first came in the church building. But look at here, they didn't give you the rest of the scriptures. There's other parts. Amen. He prepares the heart. Amen. Yes, before you get in the building. Amen. Have we not forgot that when Israel was down there, who was not a people, that God came down and he said, ah, yeah, I'm looking at them. And I hear the cry. They're crying. They won't offer them under their taskmaster. And so I'm, they, they about ready, but I'm going back up, but my eyes is upon them. Amen. He heard the cry of Israel and he delivered them. Somebody say amen. Amen. They were not his people to he chose them. Amen. They cried out before they came out. Somebody say amen. And all I'm doing is giving hope to you that may be in bondage, that may be bound. Ain't no shame, amen, when you understand you can come out. And I want you to know that Jesus is the door. 
you can come out and be saved and can't nobody shame you, amen, because once he justified you, there is now therefore no condemnation to them that are in Christ. So don't let nobody make you feel bad. Amen. Because you did all that they didn't do. Look, whatever they was doing, they was on their way to hell too. And that's why I tell people, don't you don't you rank all this sin stuff. Because it's only one hell. Amen. It's one hell. I don't care if you're not a game banker. You can, I did everything right. You don't get to know Jesus. You're going to be in there with him. Amen. Ah, look at that last one. Look at that. Look, if you don't get your act together, you're going to be in there with him too. There's no big sin and little sin. God come to save man from his sin. So the church got to get it together so we don't be just amen, just judging people and casting them in, into hell. God don't want to catch nobody into hell. He want to save man from a devil's hell. I keep telling you, hell was not created for mankind. It was created for the devil and his angels. And since the time of creation, the devil said, I ain't going by myself. I'm going to get as many as I can. Amen. But you got a purpose in your heart. Look, I won't out. You're not getting me to go with you. Amen. He paid the price for me. And I want mankind to know it. Amen. That's what, amen, salvation is about. Now, denomination and religion won't come at you like that because they want to build their religion and their denominations. Amen. If you ain't one of them, they're going to say God don't love you. Amen. But I, I beckon my Conrad's. Why don't we just step to the side from all of that stuff and just, let's just go to being believers. All right. All right. Amen. Because he never told us to come to uh, come to Church of God in Christ. Come to Apostolic. Come to Catholic. Come to Mormon. Come to Lutheran. Come, he didn't never tell nobody to come to that. He said, come unto me, all ye which are heavy laden, weary, and I will give you rest. Not the organization, not the man, not your bishop, not that pastor, not that teacher, not your all-star. He said, I give you rest. God is calling men and women to teach and preach him. That men might get to know the God that said, let there be. Amen. Praise the Lord. So on tonight, amen, I just had to get that off me so we can get this. I don't have a long nothing tonight, amen, but I want you to know it's underscored. The just shall live by faith. Amen. Uh, if you have your Bibles, if you can turn with me real quick over here, amen, into, uh, are you all right? To read, I'll read if you you can read. All right, we're gonna challenge you tonight then. Amen. I have backup. Amen. For some of you that have not been reading like you should be reading, that's a that's a book of the Bible. Amen. And we're gonna be in Habakkuk chapter two. Amen. Chapter two. And she's gonna get for us verse four. Habakkuk, that's in the old testament. That's all right, take your time. Take your time. Amen. When you get there, uh, Habakkuk. Yeah. Two, chapter two. Amen. Take your time getting there. Amen. When, and, and you will love that book. You know, sometimes, amen, our congregation get, they say, that preacher be long. Amen. And sometimes you can open up your Bible, you go read the, you go see Deuteronomy with all the chapters in it. And I say, but if you're going to run over here to the back and you're going to see ain't nothing but three chapters over there. Some of you out there, you should have been and read that book. <laughs> you should have been and read that book. That's been one of your favorite books. Amen. It's just three chapters. Come on. Some of you are so smart. Amen. You, you know how to memorize stuff. You, can, you might be able to remember. I, I know one that can, I know a guy can memorize chapters. Amen. But it's a short book, but it's a powerful book. And it has its place. Amen. We're going to tap and wait for you all. And when you have it, say amen. You can throw your hand up. Amen. And if you're the last one, don't feel bad. Amen. Because we just want everybody to see this tonight. Amen. This lady Lisa read it for us. Amen. Tonight, this is centered around the just shall live by faith. Amen. Praise the Lord. And I want you to know tonight, if you believe in Christ Jesus, amen, because of the work, the redemptive work he done in being born, living the life, paying the price, dying the death, uh, going down, amen, dying for you and I on his cross. Amen. He paid the price. He not only died, but he got up. 
And I thank God he got up because as he got up and there was life, because of that, you can have new life. Amen. And when you believe the gospel report that he paid the price for your sins, amen, that you might be able to go about a new and living way, amen, you need to understand you've been justified mm -hmm. by what he's done. And I want those that may not be saved and may not know and may be still over there with that stick that you're about to put down, amen, as you come to Christ and when you receive him as Lord and Savior, amen, is his blood, is his life, is his righteousness, is his holiness that justifies you. Amen. I, I know many walk in arrogance and they self righteous and they think it's they they think it's them. They think they're better than and all of that. That's just somebody that have not really got a chance to know the Lord like they should. Amen. But the righteousness that we have is His righteousness. All right. The holiness that He allow us to have is His. Amen. And when we in Him, you know, we sing a lot. People use his name. They say, in the name of Jesus. Amen. In this name. And you got some of these doctrines talking about in the name. I don't care what you say over people. If they're not in Jesus, if they're not in Christ, oh, bless his name. It's about learning how to live in him, in him that brings about the change. So when I get in him, the life I once lived, the person I once loved was, is no more. Because, amen, I am in him. He don't even see me no more. He see his son. He see me in him. And he declares me to be the righteous of God. Amen. And I mean, he gives me an ability not to live like I once used to live. Think like I once used to think. Do the things I once used to do. Amen. But it's all because of him. All right, Sister Lisa, what does Habakkuk 2 and four says. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him. Do me a favor because that's the highlight. Go go up there till about the second verse. Mm -hmm. To the second verse. If you don't mind, just y'all go along with me. Amen. And the Lord answered me and said, mm -hmm. Write the vision and make it plain upon the table. So, so the prophet had a question for those of you, amen, that's been tortured and tormented and bullied. When they say, don't ask God no questions. Don't ask God no questions. You know, some preachers that do you like that. Some people out here that's listening to them, they've been abused like that. That if you ask the preacher a question, he beat them half to death and he bullied them and tortured them. Who dare you? I'm the pastor. I'm the leader. Oh, that's, you know, they do that because they don't have no answer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because they, they, they don't want your question because they can't give you the answer. Amen. But look, I would have you to know and set you free in your mind. God is not going to beat you up because you ask him a question. Right. Amen. If you ask him a question, he is very secure in who he is. He's the only wise. Matter of fact, he wants you to come talk to him. He wants you to ask him that you can be clear that when the devil comes, you won't be confused. And so here it is, Habakkuk asked the question, and where she pulled off and started reading, he, she said, and the Lord answered him and said, read on. Write the vision and make it plain upon tables, mm. that he may run that readeth it. Write this vision down. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, oh my. but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Mm -hmm. Though it tarry, Wait for it. Yes. Because it will surely come. It will not tarry. What he write down, what God give him to write, uh -huh. God is saying, look, though it tarry, it's coming. Mm. Amen. It. You wait for it. Amen. You hope thou in it. Mm. What I say will come to pass. I want you to know as God was giving and we're down at the minor prophets because you begin to have Jeremiah, you had Ezekiel and Isaiah and all the holy prophets begin to be used by God to speak some things that was to come for an appointed time. Isaiah said it like this, he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquity, chastised that we might have peace and not only that, he suffered stripes and with his stripes and by his stripes, man was going to be healed but that vision that was 
given man to see was set for an appointed time. And by the time you got there back, he said, look, we done heard a whole bunch of stuff. And we're seeing, it seems like Israel has been given over to the enemy. The Chaldeans is doing what they're doing. Lord, you done said some things, but is it ever going to come to pass? It seems like those that you have not chose is dominating over those that you've chosen. We're in the dark. We, it's a shadow on this. Will it ever come to pass? And I mean to God. God said, will it teach told that Rebecca like this is going to come to pass in its appointed time. So read on, read on. Behold, uh -huh. his soul which is lifted up is not upright in, upright in him. He got, got lifted up. But the just shall live by his faith. By his faith. God was concerned about how man began to murmur and complain and couldn't see. He knew it because he was giving things in part. But what he gave was so powerful and so mighty that if you'd have held to the promises, amen, of his, it would have kept bringing you. If you'd have just held on, it would have kept bringing you to what he was going to do. But Israel was prone to always letting it slip, always doing the wrong thing, amen, always it's not thinking about God, throwing things to the side. But God wanted them in the midst of all of their journey. He wanted them to hold fast to the promise that man would realize he's not a man that he should lie. Somebody say amen. amen. The just shall live by faith. Now turn with me real quickly over there to Hebrew the 10th chapter. And I want you to read in Hebrew chapter 10. And if you don't mind, amen, why don't you start about the 37th verse over there in Hebrew chapter Chapter 10. Amen. And we're going to tie these two scriptures together because the brethren in the Bible, when they taught and preached, they knew what they were doing. Sometimes as preachers, we don't know how to rightly divide and put the scriptures together. And the next thing you know, we take what God was talking about and talk about something else. Amen. But the Lord knew the whole time what he was up to, even when he was revealing things or revealing on need basis what he wanted to to the prophets, to Israel. He was given them bits and pieces of the puzzle. And I will help you with something on tonight. This Bible is like a puzzle. Amen. The old and the new, it goes together. Amen. It's, it, it, uh -uh. It, just because you don't understand the old, don't throw it away. Amen. And just because you think you understand the old, don't throw the new away. Amen. We got to be able to put it all together because the Old Testament was uh, a shadow of things to come. And the New Testament, because God revealed himself and he came down, amen, was the revealing of the Old Testament. So the Old Testament is the concealing of Jesus and the New Testament is the revealing of him. What do you mean by that, preacher? I mean, all these scriptures talks about Jesus. Amen. Yeah. I mean, all the way from the beginning, from the book of Genesis, when he said the seed of the woman, that seed he was talking about was Jesus. Amen. They didn't know it way back then because we didn't have all the other books. But God always had up his sleeve what he was going to do. He just didn't make it known all to mankind. I want you to get that tonight because even as believers, it's things you're going to face. It's troubles and trials that you're going to have to endure. Amen. And you don't know which way they're going to come. But you got to remember at all times and in all things when it come, you got to know the God that saved you, the God that called you, amen, will not bail out on you, but he'll help you get through it all because this is how you're going to stay alive. Amen. In God. Read from Hebrew 10 and start at verse 37 and go to about 39. What do the Bible say? For yet a little while, uh -huh. and he that shall come will come Woo. and will not tarry. Sound like a back a little bit over there. Point now, in time. Keep reading. Now the just shall live by faith. Uh huh. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. My God. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Come on, put your hands together for the reading of the word. You can be seated. Amen. The just shall live by faith. And I love it when Pastor Paul, amen, began to bring out and he wrote, amen, that look at here, we're not of them that draw back. 
that means we are those that believe to the saving of the soul. We don't retreat. We don't give up. Amen. Don't throw your hands up. Don't quit. Amen. When God is walking with you and have called you out. Amen. If you get knocked down, you ain't got to stay down there. Get up. Amen. If you seem like you've lost your way, stop walking and just say, I'm lost. Help me, Lord. Because he knows how to come just where you are. Amen. I want you to know, to get to know the Lord, you're going to get to know him in every facet of the word. You're going to get to know that he's your strength. He's your help. He's your joy. He all, oh, yes. He's your ability. Amen. That means things are going to come. And then some of this will be long duration because he's going to speak something to you and it might not happen right away. And that's what's wrong with this generation today, brother. If it don't happen now, it seems like they kick, complain, and throw all type of tantrum. But the Lord is like this. You're not going to rush me. All right. Amen. I know how to draw you. Amen. You know, I, I sit there and I tell people all the time. I said, the only complaint I got about over here, amen, is I wish I would have done it sooner. Amen. The only complaint about being saved and walking with God is that I really wish that I would have surrendered sooner, that I wouldn't have ran into so much stuff. Amen. It could have kept me from so many uh, traps and all these booby traps I found myself in and picking up all these different ways. So if there's any if there's anything that I wish, amen, the only, the only regret I have is that I didn't say yes sooner. But other than that, in spite of the trials and the trouble that comes with walking with God, the temptation and all the hatred that you're going to face because Jesus was hated without a cause, amen, the suffering that come the way for being a witness is coming your way, amen, look, at, in spite of all that, amen, I still choose the Lord because he He's the best thing that ever happened unto me. And you got to swing that around in your life. Yeah. Amen. No matter what comes your way on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah. You got to realize the Bible said the just shall live by faith. Right. Amen. God will walk with us and take us about a way that you will really realize it's not your job that's sustaining you. You're going to really realize it's not the woman, it's not the man. I'm the one that make ways. I'm the one that open doors. I'm the one, amen, that help you when it seems like you ain't got no help. Amen. He's going to let you know when you seem like I'm all alone. He's going to get you to the point where you're going to realize you're not alone. Because I don't know anybody that can be with God and be alone. Amen. Because he promised all of us, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. So when you recognize you got a God, amen, that's in it for the long haul, you got a purpose in your heart, then you know what, Lord? I'm in it for the long haul. Amen. I want to stick with you because you was there when nobody else was. The just shall live by faith. And for you to understand how you live, you got to know what faith is. It's many preachers that have been preaching about faith. Amen. I got faith to believe this, faith to get money, faith to this and faith to that. I don't know what faith they talking about. Amen. Because look at the end of the day, there's one faith and there's one Lord and one baptism. And when you really dig down into that, that one Lord is Jesus. That one baptism is Jesus. Then he must be also the one faith. Amen. He is our faith. Somebody say amen. Now I know, I know, I know we got some well-renowned people and they teach faith like faith is believing. But I'm one of these ones that believe the scriptures are right. Amen. At the end of the day, faith is not believing. You have to believe in the faith. That's why I say faith come by hearing and hearing by the word. Amen. I mean, when you hear the word, you got to believe in the word. You have to believe in the faith to get the faith. And when you believe in the faith, you stick your teeth in there and never let go. Amen. Because at the end of the day, faith, amen, will bring you through whatever you got to go through. Amen. And by faith, you can make it. And when you really come to see that faith is Jesus. Faith is Jesus. And John said, John, when he got into his apostleship, when they were disciples, they were learning. Amen. And John walked with him. He laid his head in his bosom. And when he was a disciple, he really didn't know who he was laying his head in the bosom of. But my God, after Jesus died and rose a 
again and he showed himself to them and he opened their understanding to the scriptures. Brother John was so excited that when you look at John chapter 1, John started out the gospel like this. In the beginning was the word and the word was made flesh. That same word dwelt among us. Amen. John began to realize the whole time I was walking, I didn't really understand who I was walking with. That word was made flesh. Amen. And it dwelt among us. We beheld his glory as the only begotten. Amen. But John realized he came as, but the whole time he was God because the word was God from the beginning. And even when he came down in bodily form, man didn't realize. So they said he's the carpenter's son. They said he's the seed of fornication. See, I, I know, see, some of you thought you was the only one being talked about. Amen. But Jesus was talked about too. Amen. Mary was talked about too. Amen. They hated Jesus without a cause. So toughen up. Amen. They're going to hate you without a cause. Amen. Those, amen, that don't like you will lie. Amen. But just don't let the lies be true. Amen. Look at you. Hold your head up and do this thing for Jesus. Amen. I want you to know something. When John came into his apostleship and his eyes came open, he realized the very one he was laying his head in, ah, the one that came in by the virgin birth, amen, that they gave the name Jesus, meaning Emmanuel, God with us. John began to see, wait a minute, it was God the whole time, amen, I laid my head in his bosom, he walked with us, he talked with us, he taught us, this man conquered the grave, can't no man conquer no grave, but God can, amen, he came down in the status of a man to deliver a man because he loved mankind so. Amen. Because he wanted a way for man to be able to live again. Remember in the Old Testament in Genesis, he told Adam that if you do this, the day you do, you're going to die. You're going to get disconnected from me. You're going to lose the relationship. We, we, we're not going to be close no more. The enemy is going to take you and drive you far from me. Amen. But uh, uh, So don't touch it. Don't touch it. But Adam, amen, hearkened to the wife. The Satan came in and deceived Eve. And he messed up mankind. But God said, no, -uh, I'm not going to suffer the loss like a widow. I'm not going to cry about this thing. Because I already had it in my plan that if he sinned, I'm going to redeem him. I'm going to come down and pay the price. And I want you to know, amen, don't be willfully sinning, but if you sin, you need to know you got an advocate with the Father. That you ain't got to let sadness and shame amen, drive you away. Amen. You tell that devil, uh-uh, I'm going to my Father. Amen. And I'm going to get cleaned. I'm going to get cleansed from this. And I don't want it in my life no more. And when you want out before God in that way he will cleanse you, he will make you, he will heal you I just want you to know don't never give up hope as even as Paul wrote over there in Hebrew, we are not of them that draw back, you can't cast away your confidence I mean you got to be like the lost son he was in a bad condition, I mean he messed around and got away from his father so he ended up in the hall pit doing things he know he shouldn't have been doing, in places he know he shouldn't have been, with people he know he shouldn't have been, but he lost the status of being a son. I want you to know, amen, when God give you power to become a son, amen, he give you the ability not to do what you used to do, not to live like you used to live. He give you the ability to say no to the things you once said yes to. Amen, he changed your heart, give you a different desire. You don't have a taste for it no more. When he comes into your life, he blesses you. Amen. But when you get away, amen, from where you're supposed to be, things creep in. And what that lost son did, he found himself in a state. Amen. And what he did, he came to himself one day. And he said, wait a minute, what am I doing here in the hog pen? Amen. Ah, I'm going to get up from here. And the Bible said he about to sit there and eat what the hogs was eating. 
but he came to himself and said, I'm going home. I'm going to let him know I sinned against you and against heaven. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But he realized, I don't want to go out like this. I don't want it to end like this because I remember what I once had and how good my father is. He got servants that's doing better than me. And up that man got out of that hall pen and began to walk back home. And while he was walking, the father looked out. Amen. Because he had it in the plan. And he said, oh, look at him. That boy, that's my son. He, he didn't even get into the house yet. He said, that's my son who was dead. But now he's alive. He started orchestrating. He said, go kill the fatted calf. We getting ready to have a party up in here. Amen. He's on his way home. Amen. He's on his way back. I've been praying for him. I planned for him. I never gave up on him. And I want you to know that's many in Zion. Amen. Shame. Amen. Is trying to barricade them. Ah, uh, yeah. Sin is seeking to destroy you. But I want you to know God loves you. You don't give up. You look up. Amen. You got to hold on with everything in you and say, Lord, remember me one more time. And if you do that, amen, you'll find the scriptures are true. The just shall live by faith. See, that's an appointed time. There's a time and a season for everything. Amen. Too long, amen, the enemy has beat upon mankind. Yes. And God is watching over and all he's waiting on somebody to do is say, look, Lord, this is enough. You got to help me. I tried and my trying is not good enough. I'm tired of being like this. I'm tired of my life being a roller coaster. I'm tired of making the wrong decisions. I'm tired of being pushed from pillar to post. And brother, if you can come clean and honest with God, God is like he did the lost son. When after he got through with that man, he didn't pledge him like some churches be doing and some people do amen he said look here what I'm going to do I'm going to put his ring back on his hand I'm going to give him back his rope amen I'm going to put him back in his proper place as been a son and that man came in he wasn't trying to push his way amen the Lord restored him and God is looking to restore many back into the place that they once was what you mean preacher he want to give you back your first love he want to give you back the way you begin to get you farther than where you was because there's more that go with your salvation and many praise the Lord is on dangerous ground because they're not hungering for more but I want you to know when he saved you he saved you with purpose it's not for you to get content it's not for you to look down your nose against people. It's not for you to think you better than somebody else. It's not for you to sit right there and say, oh, look at him. No, no, that's not the character or the spirit of God. Because God is like this. When he sees somebody down, he want to lift him up. When he sees somebody messy, he want to clean them up. Ah, uh, you got to always remember, he forgave you. He cleaned you. The just shall live by faith. And as I get ready to pen a close on this, as I'm sitting here, the Holy Ghost bring to me. Over there in Hebrew chapter 11, the Bible begins to say, by faith and through faith, these all obtain a good report. And I want you to know faith will bring you through the waters. Faith will bring you through fire. Faith will help you when the floodgates come and faith will help faith will help you in the lion's den. How can you say all that, brother preacher? Because when I look back over it, amen, and I'm sitting here, amen, as I stand before you, it was God that brought Israel out. And when he brought them out, that stood one day as it was coming out, the Red Sea. And then you had Pharaoh and his army behind them. I want you to know the devil don't give up on you. He always come after you. Amen. But don't shiver and don't fear because God has not given you the spirit of fear. But power, love, and a sound mind. And what ended up happening, we find out through the report of Israel that Pharaoh army began to make ground upon them. And they sat there and said, how in the world do we escape now? Everybody's nervous but God. Because he realized this is the point. I want to show you what I can do. Amen. And they 
they sat right there and Moses began to get a little moved and what ended up happening he began to pray to God and the Lord began to deal with Moses about what was in his hand see while the leader's leading he's working on his relationship too and God takes him higher then you can go higher too and he told Moses what is that in your hand stretch it out and when he stretched it out over the matter over the situation over the adversity I want you to hear this tonight because to learn how to live by faith and know that you're justified you gotta start stretching out his word yeah. over your situation yeah. speak the word yeah. in the face of adversity yeah. and what Moses did he stretched it out and the Lord allowed the wind to blow upon the Red Sea and then he oh Israel amen they sitting right there looking at the Red Sea and knowing Pharaoh's on his way and I mean Pharaoh was coming with crew hate he was coming to destroy he was coming to just do away with him amen and I need you to know something preachers don't preach like this no more but the devil is still real too he come to kill, steal, and destroy. Ah, uh, yes, amen. I got to make you aware. But then I got to let you know you got power over the devil. When he come, you got to understand you got an adversary that don't like you. He don't like that you got your liberty. But you got to always remember the just shall live by faith. I'm not going to die, but I'm going to live to declare the wonderful works of God. When trouble comes, Jesus don't leave. And too many when trouble comes, temptation comes, problems come, they go to murmuring, they go to complaining. Yeah. They forget God. They take the eyes off of him and put it on the matter. Yeah. And anybody that take their eyes off of him, you're going to say, yeah. you won't maintain the level that you're on. And that's how the enemy overtakes us. But God wants the preachers to let men and women know you look to them promises. You look to your faith. Amen. Because faith will bring you through. Faith will take you through. And faith is Jesus. He will bring you through whatever you got to go through. He will help you get over whatever you got to get over. It was David that bad witness. He said, I feel like I can run through troops and leap over walls by him. And I want you to know if you've ever had any success in God. Amen. You got to realize it wasn't you that gave yourself success. It was nobody but but faith. It was Jesus that gave you the victory. It was Jesus that changed your life. It was Jesus that cleaned you up. It was Jesus that watched over you when you slept in slumber. It was Jesus that delivered you. It's Jesus' peace you have. It's Jesus' joy you have. That's why he said the just shall live by faith. When you think about that thing over there, Abraham. Amen. When faith spoke to Abraham and said, come out from among them. Uh, he talked to a man that was an idol worshiper. Amen. He talked to a man that didn't know him. And anybody that got any experience walking with God, did get, they going to understand for Abraham to get a call like that. Abraham had to be getting tired of his doing. I believe you got to get weary. You got to get tired of the direction that you're going. And when you long for a better way, God shows up in your behalf. And so what God did, amen, Abraham making idols with his father. Amen, Tira. And they sit right there making idols. One day Abraham had to come to this conclusion. We're making gods. And we're making it with our hands. But who made us? Mm -hmm. uh, Abraham, even though it was the family business, Abraham had to realize it got to be more to this. Because yeah. what we make it ain't real. That's right. But they bound down to it. <laughs> they making it a stone of God. And Abraham had to begin to realize we ain't stone. Somebody had to make us. Somebody made my daddy, his daddy, his daddy, his daddy. Somebody made man. And because he had a longing and a desire, because he got tired of the way he'd gone, then go the Lord said, come out from among them. Amen. 
amen, and I mean to tell you, Abraham didn't never stack up. Amen. Fame said, come out. And if you can hear this on tonight, as many that's in particular matters, you got to come out from among them. Amen. And be ye separate, saith the Lord. You got to come out and let God orchestrate your life. That means God may want to put you around some real people. Put you around some real believers. You'd be surprised how many people are locked up in church walls. They're not in there because they love God. They in there because they got friendships. They in there, oh, help me tonight. It become like a club. It's like a fraternity now. Amen. Oh, they don't miss God. They miss Susu. They miss Brother Bopo. Amen. But oh, no, that ain't why you assemble. When you assemble, you assemble to praise him. You assemble to be in his presence because to just realize we live by faith. We live by him. That's what I love what God is doing here. And upon this rock, when we gather, amen, we ain't coming to get the praise to nobody. We gonna get the praise to God. Amen. Look at here. And we might not have all the music we want, but brother, when your mind is on Jesus, when you're looking to the author and finisher of your faith, when you realize I live by him, it was because of him that they I escaped the fear of the power. When the devil came with temptation, the Lord said, look at great as he that's in you, than he that's in the world. He didn't get my feet. I kept walking in his power because the just shall live by his faith, by Jesus Christ the Savior, by him being the liberal. When you lean on him, you find out it is true. It's in the Lord we live. It's in the Lord we move. And it's in the Lord we have our beat. You realize that many are using faith and they don't understand it. But they didn't get it. It was by what God said. And when you understand his word became flesh and dwelt among us. It was faith that healed the impotent man. It was faith that delivered the man at the garden of the Gadarenes that was bound with demons. It was faith that healed blind Bartimaeus. And it was faith that healed the woman with the issue of blood. Look, the just shall live by faith. You got to recognize Jesus is your everything. The crown jewel of heaven. And if he spoke it, we got to keep believing it. Sometimes it's come to a point in time. The word he speak unto you is for a point in time. You got to hold to it without doubting it. Although the enemy come in upon you. And it seems like things ain't getting right. You got to quit looking at it. And look at him. And do like David did. David said, look, I learned to walk in the valley. And I experienced the shadow of death. But although I was in the valley, he found out I ain't in there by myself. Thy rod and thy staff. It kept me confident. It guided me. It let me know he's there with me. He's the good shepherd. I mean, David understood. You know, some people, they just go to that scripture and rehearse it. And they just repeat it. And they don't understand it. They ain't living it. But David said, look, I know him. He can be in the valley. And he's down there with you. You ain't in the valley. Because you walk through it, you ain't got to have an experience like your spirit is beat up. Because you can get in the valley and still sing praises. You can still get in the valley and praise your God. Well, the enemy is hoping that you will begin to murmur and complain. It'll come to you, wait a minute, and I'm the just not live by murmur and complain. And I died like that. I am the just live by faith. So I'm going to praise the Lord from sun up to sun down. No matter what goes on throughout the day, Lord, let a praise stay in my heart. Help me not to mind trouble, but to look unto you. Help me to look beyond my present circumstances. And the Lord will look at you and say, look here, you learn it, honey. Amen. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to add to your spiritual stature. Come on up a little higher. Amen. I'm going to build you. I'm going to settle you. I'm going to Established you. I want you to know you can make it by him. You can make it through him. Oh, yes, you can. You don't have to give up. You ain't got to backslide. You ain't got to throw the towel in. If God said it, he's able to bring it to pass. If God said it, he can make it.
looking good. The just shall live by faith. Just hold on. I reminded in the scripture there, it was David one day as he began to walk with God and got to know him on all type of levels and got elevated to the king's seat. And my God, God wrought many victories. And one day they was out and they was in that battle at Ziklag. And as they went out, they came back. And when they got back, the whole camp was burned up. All the children and the wives was taken. And David and all his men ran in there. And they didn't hear nobody. And they saw the smoke. They saw all the fire. And as they looked at all that, their heart fainted. But the relationship that David had, and even David wept bitterly. He wept so long that he got tired of weeping. And you got to get tired of these states where God is not at. And my God, David got somewhere and began to pray. As he was praying, by this time, the man that was with him that loved David, and they loved God first so they could love David, they began to get rid of the, the enemy prevailed and start making them look at David like this David's fault. Mm -hmm. And they were getting ready to come together to try to kill David. But David still the way. Mm -hmm. And he got before God, he told them, look, where is the ephah? I know I'm the king, but David had a thing about getting that ephah. And the ephah was a covering for the priest. But David was a king. He said, look here, I want to get in his presence. I want to get next to God. Give me that ephod because that's what the priests do. When they go in there, they put the ephod on. And David got that ephod and began to go to the throne and got to talking to God. And you know what God told David? Right in the midst of all that fire, right in the midst of all that bad news, David said, shall I pursue? He said, pursue. Amen. Look, David. It look bad, but I want you to go back and you get everything that the devil has taken from you. And David rose up with courage. Look, the just shall live by faith. David sat right there and didn't give up. He didn't cast away his confidence. I can imagine David said, wait, Lord, before I fought Goliath, you was with me when I killed that bear. You was with me, amen, when I killed that lion. I didn't know. I thought I was going up there to just help my brothers and take a little food to those. But then you was with me and you helped me and you slayed Goliath through me. You brought me through many things, oh God. My family, my, my, my group family, everybody's gone. This thing right here, what do you want me to do? And the Lord heard the sincerity of David and David through the midst of fire he heard from God. He said pursue and David rose up. And I mean he went back to his brethren and they took carriage. They begin to let them know. Look, David had to let them know. Look here. Everybody's going to be all right. Don't worry about your children. They're still alive. Don't worry about your wife. We're going to get them. Because the Lord said pursue. He wouldn't have told me to pursue if they weren't still alive. And hope jumps up in his soldiers. And many times that's what it takes. It just takes preaching the word. You ain't got to preach the matter. Just preach the word. Don't get caught up in the situation. Just preach the word because it's the word that calls you to live. It's God's word that gives the victory. And I want you to know they went down and it was just like God said. They overtook them and got back everything. And it got to in your life. You got to begin to see how the Lord make you to know, wait a minute, the devil did this. The devil did that. He marred my life like this. He put this in my life. The devil tried to make me feel God did it. And God is against me. When God opened up your eyes, he let you see I always been for you. No, that wasn't me. The devil did that. And I just been waiting on you to get to a place so I can make you to realize. Amen. That I want you to avenge him for everything that he's taken from you. And the only way that you can do that, you got to learn to live by faith. Amen. You got to put away murmuring. You put away control. Complaining. You put away whining and whimpering. And you quench yourself like a soldier in the army of the Lord. And you make the declaration, for God I live. And for God I die. I 
have to leave your report because you revealed the arm in my life. Lord, I know you're not done with me yet. You're the one that speak and man live. You speak and man lay down their life. I'm not going to let a doctor tell me. Amen. I'm not going to make it. I'm not going to let a doctor speak to I'm going to look to the author and finish of my faith. I'm going to stand on what's written. I shall not die but live to declare the wonderful works of Jesus. I just want you to know that faith will bring you through the fire. It'll bring you through the floods. It'll bring you through the lion dens. Some of you are experiencing lion den situations where those that can't stand you, they really don't like you and they want to devour you. But God got a way of holding up the mouth of the lion. He wants you to know that, hey, as long as I'm there and your ways please me, I make your enemies behave. I mind you, amen, the Hebrew boys, when they were in there because the just shall live by faith. They had a relationship with their God. And by faith and through faith, they didn't faint when they were through in the furnace. They didn't faint when they found themselves in the lion's den. God revealed himself to them. Look, we're going to have these experiences, but it's not for you to forget that God is with you. You got to know he's with you. You got to know he's watching over you. And I mean to tell you, I've heard now, amen, that they, you know, these missing books, and I'm not one of these ones who go with missing books because if we got all these books, let's learn to live up to them first before you bring something else in. But when they talk about over there, the Hebrew boys had a song they sing. Amen. And they say when they was going in there, I, I read it at one time and they talked about them. Amen. They sing the song before they went into the furnace. And while they was going in, they was praising. I said, you know what? That's not far-fetched. Because they had a relationship with their God. I can believe that. Because when you go through your trouble, he give you a song. He give you a song. He give you praise. Pray. That's how we fight. He give you a spirit of praise. Can you imagine they go in these young men? Now, you know, everybody in the church world still knew them as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. That's how we know them because the preacher didn't tell us that what their real names. Those were the names that they gave them in Egypt. Hmm? Because he wanted to change them young men. Look at him. He gave them different names, amen, but he couldn't change who they were. Amen. And so Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, amen, was just names, amen, that was given by King Nebuchadnezzar. Amen. But God gave them their names, amen. And you'll find out one was called, amen, Azariah, Haniah, and Mishael, amen, if I'm, if I'm quoting them correctly, amen. And they never lost their identity. They realized the God they had prayed to and got to know, they kept on walking with that God. Amen. When they got through in the Daniel was in the lion's den. He was Daniel. They called him Belshazzar. But, but my God, they, they gave him that other name. But Daniel knew who he was and he knew who his God was. And when Daniel got in that lion's den, I can imagine he realized, look Lord, you've given man dominion over animals. You're the one that created this animal and since I've been made in your image, he can't touch me. And Daniel went in there and sat down. They looked at Daniel and said, mm, Look like big old kittens and no harm came to Daniel because the just shall live by his faith. The, look, it was God watching over them and I want you to know he's going to watch over you because he's the same God today and forevermore. He don't change. You just got to expect him to do what he done for one and know he can do it for you. And it's not about these ones that I'm talking about. I want you to know it was the God that delivered him. It was the faith that brought them through. When Paul talked about it in Hebrew, he said by faith and through faith these all obtained a good report. Too long the church had magnified Abraham, Jacob, and Samson, and, and Sarah, and all them, and they left out. They were only great because of God. That's right. Because if we preach it the right way, then we, that a man of like passion, 
will realize the same God that blessed them and caused them to get in that relationship and built them up for that test, he can do you the same. So it would come away from just always trying to quote scriptures. You want to understand them and live by every word that proceed out of your mouth of your God that you can get to know him because you got to realize I live because of him. I can make it because of him. I'm more than a conqueror because of him. And by faith and through faith, I can do all things. You got to realize when it looks like it's not going to take place, I can cast all my cares upon the Lord, knowing he careth for me. I don't have to carry it to and weigh me down. I can say, here, Lord, it's in your hand. And I'm going to give it to my Father, and I'm going to praise him. I'm not going to mind the matter no more. I'm going to put it into the hands that created the world, that steal the water, that brought men and women through. I want you to know, let your confidence be built up in him. Don't cast it away. Don't cast your confidence away. Realize your God is with you every day. You got to realize he cares about you. Every thought you have. Every attack that come your way. Every negative and weak thought that come your way. I will have you to know tonight is a demon. And all they want is back into your mind. Back into your heart. So it can control your life. But you got to remember when he controlled you, you didn't have life. You got to bring every thought into captivity. Let that devil know, wait a minute, I see you. You ain't getting back in here. I hear you, and just because I hear you don't mean you got me. I wish to God that Zion would get things. Just because you get tempted. Just because you hear the devil. That don't mean he got you. That don't mean you got to do it. Now your father is like this. He talking but give them what I said. Give them what's written. And when he speak, you let them know it's written. I'm more than a conqueror. It's written that I'm an overcomer. Yeah, you used to have me doing that, but I don't do it no more. I've been saved. Blood wash. He blessed me. I don't, you don't have no control over me no more. Amen. It ain't no shame to be tempted. It's not no shame for the devil to talk to you. Amen. Because God, your father, is waiting for you to say, look now, son, what you going to do? You talk back to him. I give you power. He want to see you start fighting the good fight of faith. And when you fight because he's your father, and he see you resisting the devil and submitting to him, to him, God, he stands up and calls your enemies to be scattered. Just remember when you get the victory, it wasn't you. It was him. Just remember when the demons, they bow down to you. Just remember they're not bowing down to you. They're bowing down to him. Just remember when you start walking right and living right and doing right. It's really not you, it's him that's inside of you. You know, just, just remember these things to give him the glory and the praise so you don't get to walking around like the church as many people do today. They think they something. Amen. And more you go into places, all you do is hear about people to the to the this and to the that. And I mean, they talk more about all the people they can see than the God who is invisible. Amen. Because they don't really realize it's God that makes us who we are. It's God that keeps you and advance you and prosper you. Somebody say amen. 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 Man, I'm done tonight on this. The just shall live by faith. You're going to keep flourishing because of Jesus. Keep leaning on him. Keep letting him direct your life. Develop the relationship of knowing him. Get to know him. That he's your strength. Get to know him as a keeper. Get to know him as the healer. As the peace giver. Get to know him yes. as your way maker. Yes. 
Let him show you. He want to do it. Hallelujah. He wanted to show Israel, look, I, I, I can do more than whoop them. I whoop your enemies. But now you walk with me. I want to show you I can provide for you. I want to show you that I fight your battle. I want y'all to realize when I take you over, I'm going to tell you to go and take the land. Because I'm going to cause them to be defeated. I want you to know in your life, every believer on tonight, you can make it. Let this, if no matter where this word catch you at, be strengthened in your heart. Let your confidence be equipped to be better than you once were. Keep progressively getting better and better. Walking and getting to know him. That he can turn around and use you to help a dying world. Because before you introduce him to somebody, remember you got to get to know him yourself. Is that all right? Stand on your feet. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you tonight for those that have tuned in by the way of internet in this message of the just shall live by faith. Thank you for coming in tonight to comfort their heart. No matter what they're facing, oh God, help them to rise up in confidence that you might show yourself strong in their behalf. I pray that the believers be encouraged everywhere, that they be not discouraged, but encouraged. That they be not weakened, but strengthened to recover and to regain not only where they once was, but go further than where they once was. Use the church in this appointed time and season for your glory, because the earnest expectation of the preacher is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God, which is the believers that have developed a relationship with you. You know what those which are yours. Uh -huh. And I pray on tonight that we take advantage of the opportunity to get to know you in every era of our life. That we be found pleasing in your sight. We're not trying to be and don't want to be no hypocrites. But Lord, we want to be living epistles. We want to be representatives of who you are. That in the midst of chaos, trouble, and adversity, and temptation. We be found standing upon your word, which is you, that the gates of hell do not prevail. You help others in all they matter, so we realize you can help us. So help us to lean and look to you. So we thank you on tonight that this message will accomplish and bring forth that that you desire. In Jesus' name I pray. Now the grace of God and the sweet communion of his spirit both rest, rule, and abide in the lives of the hero tonight. Yeah. That you would lift us and bring us for your glory. In Jesus' name I pray. And all of God's people said amen. 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 You go with God. He'll go with you. God keep you is our prayer.